you know, that ball goes out of the end zone for a touchback. Talent wise, they don't. You know, you can. It's obvious that they don't match. They don't stack up with us talent wise. You know, but I cannot stress enough. I, what they are doing on offense is, is to make, and it's just it's, it's so simple. And one thing we talked about at the top of the broadcast here with Ricky Cotton, I'm Dwayne Lewis, a Rick Comedy coach team. They're going to play hard. They're going to play all 60. And they're going to be tough. They're going to be a tough-minded football team that's mm -hmm. going to play for the entire time on the clock. Without a doubt. And all of a sudden, you know, they get the touchdown, the body language change. You know, they're up on their toes. So let's see how we come out. Topping is getting that quarterback. Handoff Thomas running left. Big hole across the 40. A loser defender across midfield. And a big run for Khalid Thomas. Gain of about 29. First and 10. And a big run for this offense. A great run for us. And we need to continue it. Let's not shoot ourselves in the foot. You know, if we don't shoot ourselves in the foot, we'll be fine. And keep it in uh, Mr. Thomas' hand. First and 10 from the Valley 46. Free play as Valley outside. Toppings will take a shot. And it is incomplete. Pass intended for Hannah. A bit underthrown. But the flag on the play for offsides will give us first and five from the Valley 41. One of the things that is puzzling to me is why we haven't had the quarterback to pull the ball since the touchdown. <laughs> I mean, it's basically been an unstoppable play. And Topping's doing a good job now. And I'm expecting him to pull it soon. Has been very effective as a runner with 54 yards rushing. Just one for seven now. Stay focused. Just under 11 minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. Hornets lead Valley 37-22. On a beautiful night here in Montgomery, this sparkling new ASU stadium. Handoff. Thomas, good open field tackle. He gets a short gain. One, maybe two. It'll be third down. And we'll call it three from the Valley 39-yard line. This is a crucial play for us right here. You know, it might be two down territory. Toppings, we're audible. Changes the play at the line. 10-25 and counting here in the fourth. Handoff, Thomas running left, runs through tacklers. First down and more, 20, 15, knocked out of bounds inside the 10. Another great run for Thomas, first and goal for the Hornets. Yeah, we needed that. We needed that. Now we can go and stick this one in, we need, but we got to punch it in. We got to finish the job. You know, Sevens, not threes. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's, you know, it's not in the end zone yet. You know, anything can happen in these next eight yards first and down and goal from the eight as once again toppings will audible valley trying to stack the right side of this defense against our offensive left thomas will run right big hole and will walk in for the touchdown yeah we talked about that earlier too you know we talked about the heat and uh, the depth of the team. And I think that the Alabama State depth is beginning to take over. See a lot of the Valley players, they're laying down after the play. They got their hands on the hip. And I think fatigue is set in. And that touchdown right there, I mean, it was evidence. It was so wide open. It was evidence that those guys basically, you know, kind of laid down right there. And it might do because of their fatigue. Because they've been outmanned and outnumbered throughout the day, especially with this heat. So Thomas now with 98 yards rushing on only nine carries. He has a personal foul penalty against the Hornets for a celebration will be assessed on the kickoff as the Hornets with 43 on the board trying to double up the Delta Devils on this extra point attempt by Shepard. Kick is up 
and it's good with 941 to play Hornets 44 Delta Devils 22 you're watching Hornets football on BamaStateSports.com Mississippi Valley State 22 We are back here in so Khalil Thomas with the touchdown run nine carries 98 yards five punt returns 132 yards and Ricky Cotton you called it early this young man having a tremendous night yeah and I, and I was expecting it you know watching him uh, last week against Tennessee State I mean he just jumped off the field to me and, and the thing that really jumped off was his courage and his willingness to get the ball and make plays. And I mean, he wants to make plays with the ball. He's an exciting runner. And the thing that he have, you can't coach it. He just got vision. You know, he got vision. He got uh, unbelievable feet. You know, and I, I you know, anytime he touched the ball, he, he's thinking touchdown. That's one of the things that I really uh, I like about him. So a great one-two punch. You know, Cyrus had a big night as... Valley returns the kickoff to about the 40-yard line. And a great night for Cyrus as well. 171 yards on 18 carries with Thomas knocking on the door of 100 yards. We've rushed as a team for more than 300 yards tonight. Yeah, and with his all-purpose yard, with his punt return and stuff, they already have eclipsed 300 yards. So basically it's been a two-man wrecking crew out here tonight against uh, Mississippi Valley. You know, it, it's a tough example. It's a tough thing for a coach like Coach Comerji to you know to watch his team out man like that when he used to win in, in such a uh, big fashion. Ivy being pressured in the pocket. He'll go deep, and it will be just out of the outstretched hands of Marcus Bird going for the interception. That pass overthrown. It'll be second down. I have no idea who he was throwing that to. Berg went a long way trying to haul in that pick. It'll be second down and 10 from the 40. With 9.23 to play here in the fourth quarter. I see the adjustment that we made on that on that little waggle route that was hurting us earlier. It seemed to me we went to a Tampa two, but we putting a double team on uh, the uh, inside slot receiver, and that taking away that little seam route that they was getting earlier. So basically giving them that you know the little flat route. Third down six. Ivy pumps in this sack. Ball comes loose. Ball still free. And recovered by Valley. Here's that. It's a big hit in the backfield by this Hornet defense. I believe it was Mosley. Didn't quite catch the number, but a big three and out for this Alabama State defense. Yeah, we done play well on defense for the most part. You know, we, we you know, it's the same old story. It's our back end. You know, we give up things on the back end. But for us, the uh, run stoppers up front, they've been tremendous as always. Punt goes out of bounds near the 25. We'll see where they mark it. As we take a look, Ricky, at some of the scores from around the swag today, a couple of finals on the books. Bethune-Cookman defeating Grambling by a score of 36-23. Alabama A&M losing, losing to UAB 41-14. Alcorn State. Defeating Louisiana College 52 to 10. Surprising score out of Memphis. Tennessee State 35. Jackson State nothing. In the Southern Heritage Classic. As Tennessee State with 21 in the first quarter. 14 in the second really taking over that game. Third quarter score in Baton Rouge. Northwestern State 34. Southern 7. Halftime McNeese State 27. Prairie View A&M 3. And that's your swag scoreboard. No score 
reported as of yet from Texas Southern taking on Central State. Uh, the the Gremlin score really you know jumps out at me because that uh that Bethune Cookman is a really good football team you know and they stand down and they playing with Bethune Cookman that means that they have improved tremendously from last year. And going into the fourth quarter, Gremlin actually led 23-22 before two fourth quarter touchdowns from Bethune Cookman, one, arguably one of the best teams in Black College football. Moved up to number one, to number one in some of the polls this past week. After I went over Tennessee State, Broderick Fives, a, 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 a heritage, a legend at Grambling, his father played there, and you talked about it. That's a very impressive score based on what that team was in 2013 with all the turmoil that they went through. Yeah, and that Jackson State score. You know, Tennessee State is a really good football team now. So 8-22 to play here in the fourth. As the handoff, Kensey running right across the 30, short gain on the play. Yeah, that's a very surprising score with Jackson State. You know, had the win over over FAMU on the Hail Mary final play of the game. Yeah. You know, Harold Jackson, a, a Jackson State legend, coaching now. Very controversial hire from the standpoint that with Rick Comagy, who had taken his team to the championship game each of the past two years and four years in eight overall, Gets shown the door now here coaching for Valley. Another free play pass incomplete, but with the offsides, mm -hmm. should gain us five yards. Yeah, I, and the quarterback understand the free play. Now our receivers got to understand the free play. These guys didn't move at the bottom the of the The left side didn't move. <laughs> right side of the head, I got a shot for, for a catch here. I'm going to go run the ball and get out in the formation. Yeah, they got to understand that all. So. But that's a shocking score, though. Tennessee State over Jackson like that, you know. Is playing swag games through the new Thursday. Talked about trying to get our fans, get Montgomery behind this team. A big conference game. All these games are big, particularly at home as we try to establish our home field dominance in this outstanding stadium. Yeah, we're going to need all the support. You know, so uh, get your tickets and come on out and support your uh, mighty Hornets. You know, the kids are playing very hard. I thank Coach Ballo and his staff. You know, got the kids primed and ready to challenge for the SWAC championship. You know, so come out and give it our support. And finishing off this game, here will give him win number 44, moving him to second place all time on the all time win list, breaking the tie with A.E. Simmons and your former coach in George James. Oh, yeah. And, and only going to be put him behind his former coach, you know, Houston coach Markham. Houston you know. So, I mean, the winds keep packing, you know, keep, you know, keep stacking up. But what we need to do is make sure we get this one come Thursday night. We'll take one at a time. Big game against Pine Bluff. We'll follow that nine days later versus, a, for me, a surprising Texas Southern team, which posted the win over Prairie View in the Labor Day Classic about two weeks ago. I think Prairie View is one of the best in the West as Kensey on the run across the 40. Another big game. Cannot be brought down inside the 20 yard line. You pull Cyrus out, you go Thomas. You think Thomas comes out, you got to break. Then Kenzie comes in. The hits just keep on coming in this great stable of running backs for Alabama State. Well, it, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier. You know, that's off season. You know, like I said, that's one of the big. When I saw this team at the beginning of fall practice, and I, I, I told Coach that this is the best looking team we've had in a long time. And you can see that those kids have really put the work in on the off season, you know, their, their bodies and things like that. Yeah, I, and they really put the work in. And it was, you know, it was, it was just was a, uh, uh, you know, they look really good. And that play right there, it typifies a, a, a stronger, uh, you know, a stronger team. Big run by Kensey. Now, second down, we have a timeout called by Mississippi Valley State. Yeah, I think if we punch it in right here, they can go and crank up the bus. As we lead 44-22. 
with 5.55 to play as we come back inside the broadcast booth with Hornet quarterback and wide receiver Ricky Cotton. I'm Dwayne Lewis. And, Ricky, we've talked about the running game tonight. How important was this win to start conference play 1-0? and Well, any time you can get a victory in your conference, and especially at home, it's always important that you start – with a victory. You know, we talked to Coach Barlow earlier. He talked about how we got behind the past couple of years, especially last year, by losing that first home game. You know, and it's the, the uh, conference is really, really tough this year. You know, especially you got Southern, who was the champion last year, got a lot of young kids coming back, and Alcorn State, who might be the best team along with our team in the conference, and which is really strong and really playing really well. You know, they just lost. Uh, uh, by so the uh, miss last week. We saw miss. You know, could have could have won that game. You know, so you know it's going to be a challenging situation. You know, we got these few home games we need to win because we're going to have to take that odyssey. You know, in the next couple of weeks. Absolutely. You, know? Talk, you mentioned Alcorn. That will be our next Thursday night game after this homestand. It'll be a huge game, not only in the conference but a division game. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about the Braves as we move forward, as we back into play here with the handoff as. Toppings actually keeps the ball, will be brought down in the backfield for a loss. A very challenging schedule ahead after this series of home games. We go to Alcorn, big Thursday night game. We go to Prairie View, which we've had a lot of trouble with, although we've defeated the last three years. It'll be their homecoming. Bye week. Go to Birmingham. Nothing else needs to be said about that. Anytime you play that school up north, you know it's going to be a big game. Then we go to Southern. Jackson comes here. Then we go to Grambling. It doesn't get any easier after this, but it definitely helps to start 1-0. And, oh. and, you know, and every, every week when you look at the scores, it looks like the Gremlin State Tigers are getting better and better and better. And, and who knows where they'll be by the time we get to them. And that'll be a big game. And all of them are big, but I'm sure that game will have a lot of championship implications for us on the road. We know Gremlin, after we play them there, still has a Bayou Classic in New Orleans, but... The schedule does not get any easier. We know Pine Bluff, defending champs from 2012, had some personnel issues last year, but we know Monty Coleman is going to bring his team in, ready to play good football. Texas Southern much improved under Darrell Lasbury. And then you talked about Alcorn, who was picked right behind us in the Eastern Division preseason standings as Shepard makes the field goal to extend our lead to 47-22. I mean, the more we talk about this schedule, we know it will not be a cakewalk, particularly having to go on the road during that middle stretch of conference play. Yeah, anytime you go on the road in the SWAC, you know it's always going to be a challenge. Anytime you go on the road, you know it's going to be a challenge. And our Texas Southern team has never been short of talent or size. You know, it's just a matter of getting the right people in there to motivate the kids and get them prepared for the season. So that's going to be a tall order for us here before we go on that road on that odyssey. And, you know, and I think Alabama and them going to be be 0 and 9. And focus, we'll be fine. Short week ahead, getting ready for Arkansas Pine Bluff. What will be important for this team physically? Days out of the I think Coach Barlow do a great job for us, making sure that the kids' bodies get a chance to recuperate, you know, and prepare for the next game. You know, late in the season like this, you know, it don't take a whole lot of, you know, hitting and stuff like that. You know, you where you need to be. You where you need to be. You just have to need, you know, stay healthy, stay in condition. And stay committed and focused to the task at hand, you know. And everything else will take care of itself, you know. We, um, you know, we're gonna have to get better at some areas, you know. But the kicking game is, is it got or is already gone over the 200 yard mark in receiving for Valley tonight. Fourth down. Back on the play. But I think, you know, over all in all, I think they got a lot of stuff to build on Mississippi Valley. They got a lot of stuff to build on, especially on the offensive side of the ball and stuff. You know, I, you know, I, I cannot stress it enough. I like what they're doing sch schematic-wise, you know, for their scheme. You know, it's just a matter of now getting the right players, you know, getting bigger, faster, stronger, you know. You definitely have a guy you can build around as they move down their schedule. Stafford now 12 catches, 222 yards, and the one touchdown. When you have a playmaker on offense, you've talked about it a lot tonight when it was a one-score game, how one play can change things, and this guy is definitely a big-time, big-play receiver. 
Is that ball incomplete in and out of the hands for Valley? With 2.11 to play here in the fourth quarter. As that pass intended for Trey Ford, who caught a touchdown earlier tonight for the Delta Devils. For the team in white, this is the longest two minutes in football. And for the team in black that's on the field, it's the fastest two minutes in football. Because those young guys want more time to play. <laughs> two flags on the play that time as the pass complete the banks. And that is the case. You know, they're still trying to play. They want to try to show Coach, hey, I want some more playing time. You know, I'm tired of just practicing, Coach. I want to get on the field. For the Hornets, man, we like, look, it's after 8. Yeah. We're up by 25. I'm ready to go eat. Relax a little bit. Get away from this thing. Can we Can we go run in time here yeah, to take this thing home? Yeah, the parents are here. The, the girlfriends are here. You know, they want to make a play just like everybody else. They don't want Cyrus to get out of the clippings. <laughs> <laughs> they want to make a play too. Some of the plays that they made and the improvements that are needed. I know there'll be some coaching points, some teaching points mm -hmm. for defensive coordinators. Mm -hmm. To Kevin Ramsey, after this team gave up a couple of touchdowns in the second half, mm -hmm. some things to emphasize because we know that Benjamin Anderson, Pine Bluffs quarterback, is one of the best in the conference.